I give the floor now to His Excellency Klaus Wilfer, who was the Austrian ambassador to Indonesia, Singapore, and Turkey. And I would um, like you to reflect on some of the things that you've heard already this morning. Thank you, Madam. <clears throat> I'll try to be very brief. The last function I had was I was special envoy for the Austrian Foreign Ministry for the Western Balkans and EU enlargement. So that is a good connection to what I'm saying. Uh, uh, let me just mention that what um, uh, Professor Mislivets spelled out at the beginning. I think this is so precious and so important to do. Look back, analyze what has happened to understand ways out and into the future. Um, uh, I will certainly listen to, to the, uh, the quotations and, and, and uh, everything. I'm trying to study for myself. And uh, as for Ambassador Nod, uh, um, I mean, I fully concur with everything he said, and I will try to uh, follow also your um, idea of being extremely super brief to allow some space for discussion. I, I, not only on enlargement do I fully agree, uh, but also on the... Um, on the famine aspect on the hunger on the food and fertilizer issue which will I elaborate because it's so huge uh, i'm retired uh, that is uh, i'm still attached to my country and <laughs> foreign policy but i'm free to talk um, 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 basically uh, how i like it and just as a warning and disclaimer uh, on on the <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> uh, on enlargement, just a few lines. I mean, everything has been said basically um, by uh, Ambassador Andornadi, also the uh, colleague um, from um, North Macedonia. Uh, the pledge was given uh, to the Western Balkans in 2002 or three by in Thessaloniki by the EU um, uh, countries, and it was not um, lived up to. There was one major political achievement, and that was the settling of the dispute between Greece and, um, and, and Macedonia, now North Macedonia. And still, and ironically, absurdly, this was not um, followed up by, um, by rewarding uh, North Macedonia and Albania. Uh, so um, here we are, uh, very wrong signals given. I think that the spanner into the wheel of uh, an enlargement and, uh, and uh, accession uh, negotiation was thrown in actually as early as I think 2007 when the Kofi Annan plan for Cyprus uh, went, uh, went foul, when, when didn't, uh, didn't work. Turkey um, was expecting uh, to, um, uh, this to be uh, the framework for, a, uh, for her own uh, accession uh, process. Uh, Everything was stalled. The Greek um, uh, Cypriots voted against the um, implementation of the Kofi Annan plan for the settlement of the Cyprus issue. Um, of course, Turkey would have been um, a, a game changer, and altogether a different um, class uh, or size also for the European Union. It did not happen, uh, but it probably, and this is my experience as an ambassador to Turkey and the many discussions I had there with, with the Turkish colleagues, with among uh, other colleagues, that probably this was the traumatic experience uh, for the Turks, and in particular the then Prime Minister Erdogan, uh, that, uh, you know, the, the, the settlements that were kind of agreed before did not work. Uh, uh, enlargement was basically blocked. And uh, this may have changed over a longer period uh, the general attitude and, and basic orientations of, of Turkey, which is today told Turkey. Uh, so th th that is that. And it also gave a signal to all the others that, maybe uh, enlargement is, uh, is, is, will not work um, as we would have thought. And then, uh, I mean, then it, it, this was uh, taken as a lesson also, and in the enlargement process uh, initiated with Serbia, there was Article 35 included that, uh, of course, Serbia will not be able to access the European Union only after the uh, belgrade pristina issue has been solved. Uh, the EU was uh, aware that uh, it will never uh, again import a problem of a country which is not uh, settled or which has not settled it, uh, its relationship with neighbors. And now, and now we have uh, last week, when was it? Uh, and uh, the green light in, in, in principle given uh, to Ukraine and, uh, and, and, and Moldova. Uh, 
it is, of course, it is a, a, a beautiful gesture of solidarity. It is, a, it has a certain value in the immediate. Uh, it, it heartens uh, the, the minds of the um, Ukrainian defenders of, the, of their own country, and it uh, honors the victims and, and so on. But uh, how how will it uh, come to bear over time? Uh, personally, I. I'm afraid that there can be waves of disillusionment that we have seen uh, in the Western Balkans, uh, only they can be much bigger. When you see the, the polls in, in Ukraine, say, they're absolutely enthusiastic about the options and, and the, 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 the bright future in the European Union that they have before them. Well, I mean, we, have, we, we know <laughs> the, the relatively mild uh, process and, and circumstances for the Western Balkans. So just uh, dot, 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 uh, follow your own. Um, Draw your own conclusions. Okay, uh, in the Western Balkans, I think they've realized that the, the, the accession process has is, is more or less uh, shipwrecked. Uh, it's camouflaged, embellished, and I may say uh, there are beautiful uh, Western Balkan EU summits and the uh, like, but nothing is moving uh, on. How do they react? Uh, of course, there, there is still substantial funds arriving, and that is fine for, for, for them, for everybody, understandably. Uh, there is so little progress in, t in practical terms within the RCC, SEFTA movement. There's the Open, uh, open uh, Balkans initiative promoted by three countries particularly, Serbia, Albania, North Macedonia. Uh, there is, um, um, so that's that. The outside world, the EU members, they, um, they act as we, uh, we have just said. Uh, and um, maybe again, Turkey is uh, is doing um, is achieving considerable goodwill results, uh, which are in, not commensurate with the uh, input that they're doing. So they're, they're acting um, quite um, deftly and quite um, skillfully in in winning uh, sympathy, but also economic positions. Of course, Turkey is different from other uh, countries that like Russia, uh, China, Arab. They're a local country, more or less. They've been in charge of, of most of the Western Balkans for centuries, and they have, I think, a clear uh, economic interest also to make this uh, a zone of uh, stability and of economic um, uh, prosperity. So I think, uh, um, differently to um, many uh, criticisms, that we, we should uh, look at um, uh, Turkey in this, in this uh, context. How do we connect this with Central Europe and the V4 in particular? Well, the en entire enlargement issue has squarely moved north. It is now straight to the east of the V4 zone. This is a game changer. Although it's, you may say it's only a symbolic um, signal given to, uh, to Ukraine, uh, but there is a different uh, narrative now. Um, and Ukraine has been named a candidate country. That's, that's there. Uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov, he re duly reacted, and now the confrontation has acquired an extra dimension. Um, which will count in the future, depending on how the, uh, the war comes to an end or goes on. Eternal hybrid war or whatever. Uh, this leads to the overarching questions about the conflict. Which society uh, we, or which, which warring sphere uh, can be more resilient and uh, whether the storms that are uh, still brewing and, and coming uh, maybe next winter, we heard about um, energy issues. Uh, what is even more dramatic uh, is that countries like Sri Lanka, Peru, many states in Africa, they are already in, in, um, in turmoil. They are losing out big. There is a dramatic world food and fertilizer crisis which is not yet adequately tackled. It threatens to grow into a huge disaster and which actually, frankly speaking, it, it will dwarf the human and material losses uh, Triggered by the directly triggered by the war on the, in, the, in the war zone, we are talking of hundreds of thousands of people on the verge of starving. This is is not small, and in the eyes of the rest of the world, um, these the warring parties here in, in in Europe, they share a responsibility for the global misery. Both, the president of Indonesia, fourth largest nation in the world, he emphasized what the president of the African Union had just said three weeks ago, uh, they said, please liberate the food and fertilizer from Ukraine, but also from Russia. They're under sanction. The EU says, no, there are no sanctions. 
but there are indirect sanctions because uh, no uh, insurer will insure the ship uh, uh, sailing and no uh, bank will do the business between Africans and, and Russians. And they've been clamoring that. They've been invited to the G7 summit. It's a big thing. Uh, so uh, the immense challenge of, challenges of our epoch should not make the single EU members lose sight of the full picture of the world and indirectly of the fate of the European Union. Seen from far away, and I've lived in, uh, in Indonesia, I was ambassador to Singapore, there is, this is a minor local war going on, on in a spot that is kind of in, in the western end of the Eurasian landmass. And, and to remain credible, we must not lose sight of the global warming issue. <laughs> we are now <laughs> refurbishing our coal uh, firing um, institutions. Uh, as islands are sinking below sea level and countries descend into big crises. Who, if not countries of the center of Europe, should be aware how much geography counts and that you can change almost anything in this world, but hardly can you change geography and the character of your neighbors. So that's another, another thing. For the future, expect black swans. We don't know what will come next week. There can be huge uh, changes which we are not aware of. Hybrid wars is a possible uh, outcome. The damage of Europe is a danger which we have to avoid. Uh, Cutting-edge technology we have to develop in the middle of all this, uh, this misery and see what, where Europe still has um, comparative uh, advantages, maybe in energy, uh, hydrogen. I just returned from a hydrogen congress in, in Istanbul. Uh, and not lose, out, uh, not lose out, of the, out of sight climate and, the, and above all, uh, the danger of famine in, 